Info Plus for genuine information. for genuine information samrat you are welcome to the show thank you so much it is my second time that i'm having interview with you yes now you upgraded it's good news for us thank you very much i appreciate what is your primary responsibility at the moment so at this point of time i am taking care of the entire enrollment of international students for all the webster campuses worldwide that includes uh, the campuses in us in europe as well as in asia and we have started an operation in ghana so i am involved in international student recruiting from the strategic perspective for the worldwide campuses of webster university we have covered more than 300 universities all across the world um so out of that 300 um, universities um can you just let my viewers know about the webster university in details yes well uh, we are possibly the only one in the 300 universities which has campuses in four continents and uh, we are possibly going to have a fifth one very soon so we will cover all continents and one day in antarctica possibly if you consider it as a continent then we will have campuses our uniqueness is our global identity we have multiple campuses we have multiple nationalities and we have a tremendous mobility of students across this network it is this particular aspect of webster university which makes us unique for viewers who are new to learning about webster university we are a private non-profit american university and we do have a presence in all these countries including like places like for example nearby would be thailand uh, we have in austria we have in geneva in switzerland we have campuses in china in chengdu and and other places in 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 europe and also ghana so this entire network of campuses we offer a same standard of education and the students can move around this network and study in a seamless manner so that is what we are special and by the way we are ranked 24th in the us news and world report uh, for great. our us campuses so we are ranked in forbes for our business programs So it is a tier 1 university it's a top tier american university uh with global presence what is the strategy of the university to attract international students and what is the population or percentage of international students volume at your university well we have uh, currently in the university about 17000 students uh of which in thailand we have about 500 students so we are in a way a smaller campus but we do it for a reason because we have limited numbers of programs that we uh you know go with uh, we are accredited in thailand by the thai ministry and that has a certain set of rules and regulations which we follow to the core so uh, we also have a us accreditation so as a result of that we take it in a very different way of a very exclusive campus uh, in that campus itself we have over 45 different nationalities so our representation is uh, tremendous in terms of global uh out of that uh, coming to the question of like nepal if i understood your question correctly uh, we have uh, roughly about 10% of the student population between 8 to 10% who are nepalese uh undergraduate mostly a few masters degree seekers and uh i think i think in terms of uh, the 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 strategy of the university we we want to remain 
the global university. We want to remain international. So we do not ever do something very aggressive in marketing or recruiting that uh, gives us, uh, you know, like say thousands of students to go to Webster. That is not who we are. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we do want to, one of our missions is to provide education to those who do not have this privilege of going to the U.S. and uh, for, for various reasons, including visa, financial affordability. So for those students, you can definitely have Thailand as an option. And we won't stop a student from coming if Nepal becomes 15% representation. But what then my role would be to find a strategy of how I can balance it by attracting more students from other places, other countries to come and study. So we will definitely remain international. Our strategy of growth is to tier, is to, is to cater to the top tier of, of academic merit. So we are not looking at mass, we are looking at quality. And how do we make it happen is through scholarships, which we provide to the students from Nepal. Okay. Having said that, I have to link the uh, current situation of Nepal and especially the mindset of Nepalese students. Nepal is, of course, more than 70,000 students are traveling abroad for further education, uh, including United States. But because of the new government who has seated in the chair, so a huge flow of students has been diverted to other parts of the world. So uh, do you have any, any thoughts or any anything that you want to share to Nepali viewers? We are issuing i20s uh, and we are we have not seen any real change uh, this is all uh, i'm afraid is, is is what you are saying but uh, where is the evidence i i we are still getting students i uh, what i can tell you is that we have seen in the us last semester and this is data that i throw back at you we have seen 250% growth okay. in just the last semester well, those are not big numbers, I'll be frank with you, but we have seen growth in the St. Louis campus directly from here. And the students who have made it are all having 7.0 or 7.5 IELTS. They have at least 3, 3.5 their GPA, and they are able to provide enough financial evidence to say that they are not going to become illegal immigrants afterwards or they're going for genuine studies. You have um, more than 4,000 universities all across the United States. So, um, you, know, you already highlighted the strength of Webster University. Finally, those viewers who are watching you on our television, so because this is Nepal's one and only television, so which is all about international education and career, we do feature so many hundreds of universities all around the world. So what could be your message and what is the purpose of organizing um, this kind of um, press conference or meeting with the media people, especially to educate, maybe to enlighten yes, Nepali viewers? True. It is a dialogue, it is an interaction. Media helps us magnify and reach to a larger audience rather than what we do in our classrooms or in small conferences. So the, the request for a press conference is in order for all those 300 others who got rejected for a US visa to say that's not the end of the road. You can come, for example, to Webster Thailand. You can graduate from there and get an American degree if that is your real objective and be very successful, just like all the alumni who have been successful for all these years. So this is not the end of the road. And also a lot of the students who are coming to our campuses in Thailand, in Switzerland, in Netherlands and other places, they are finishing one or two years and then they are able to go to the US as a study abroad student or as a transfer student. Don't think of a visa rejection as an end of your American university dream. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and information. Thank you. Info Plus for genuine information. You are welcome to Nepal and welcome to our television show. Thank you very much. Is it your first visit here in Nepal? This is my first visit to Nepal. Yeah. So uh, how is your impression at your mind just to see the first look of Nepal? You know what, when I was flying in, driving around Nepal, I think it's absolutely beautiful here. Uh, the mountains I'm very at home in. Uh, it was absolutely beautiful flying in and seeing all of the green and all of the mountains. The people here are fantastic. So. I want to take you back to U.S. where you normally interact with so many international students. Maybe you might have interacted with Nepali students as well. Um, so how do you feel uh, to work with uh, international students coming from so many you know, different backgrounds, different cultures, different languages? Yeah, definitely. So I think 
in my experience, working with international students, whether they be from Nepal, from India, from anywhere in the world, is that when they come to the U.S. campus, you can see them grow and change at such a rapid rate. It's so rewarding in that way. They're coming to a completely different culture, a completely different mindset, and they're impression of the world changes within the first semester. They become such more well-rounded and robust individuals. It's very exciting to watch. Okay. Actually, I was recently back from Australia and visited more than 15 universities, um, especially on that very day of Deepavali. I was in Monash University and there was a great function of Deepavali, you know, lighting and colors, everything. So how do you um, celebrate or organize this kind of um, like events at your university so that students will not have cultural shock? Oh, of course. So uh, it, whether you're from Nepal or from anywhere else in the world, we make a point of ensuring that we celebrate all of these things on our campus. Just recently, we had our own holy celebration. Students from all walks of life, whether they were American, Canadian, Mexican, from Nepal, from India, they all came out. We had music, celebration, food, colors thrown. So it was a massive deal on our campus. And we make sure to highlight, no matter where you're from in the world, your culture on our campus. OK. Actually, what are the problems that you have seen, especially into international students, like from Nepal, to adjust with the environment, uh, to, to you know, adjust into the different cultures? Definitely. I think when they come to us on an undergraduate level, because they are so far away from home, they don't have access to, you know, mom and dad and all of the uh, celebrations that you do have here in Nepal. So at times they do feel that they are missing out on all of the, you know, cultural celebrations that are happening here. But we try to alleviate that by hosting some of those on our campus. Um, we also find that students don't just come and hang out. If you're from Nepal, you hang out with people from Nepal and Indians only hang out with Indians, our students all interact all together. So as far as adjusting, I feel that it maybe takes a semester and they are fully adjusted. But when they're younger, those are the things that they definitely miss out on. U.S. is always number one choice and number one destination for Nepalese students. But because of the current situation, might be, you know, they, they haven't got the proper information, you know, yeah. about the U.S. education and our visa regulations at the moment. Absolutely. So they might have a scared, especially those parents who are watching you on Nepali television, you know. What is the real situation that you have seen in the United States? And there are some, some sort of illusions that we have to clear to the students and parents. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the most common misconception is that visa regulations for international students have changed. Absolutely not one regulation has changed whether you're anywhere from anywhere in the world. Um, so students follow the exact same process. The requirements are the exact same. Uh, immigration specialists, I think nowadays, are just being forced to follow all of the rules. And maybe a year or two years back, that wasn't happening. And as a result, it was actually creating a lot more problems for international students. Now that visa regulations have tightened up and they follow all of the, the proper rules they should follow, the students that are joining us in the U.S. have absolutely no problem once they get there. It's in before when you know specialists were using their discretion and letting students in based on uh, improper documentation. That's where the problems are, came for them. But for as that far was, as visa you mean that was just a mis misconception. Absolutely, not one not one regulation has changed. The process is the exact same. Students apply to visas the exact same. If they're qualified candidates, they have good English scores, they have the financial means to support themselves when they're in the U.S., they're great candidates. They shouldn't be rejected. Okay, that's fine. Then uh, in the meantime, can you highlight or can you give us an idea uh, about the requirements or criteria, you know, who are the targeted students that, that you are looking for? Absolutely. So uh, on an undergraduate level, as an example, students for our school, uh, I'm looking for somebody that has an IELTS of a six or higher. For an, our master's levels, they need a six and a half. We're looking for students that have a high GPA. I'm looking for students with a 3.4, 3.5 or above. I'm also looking for students that fit into a certain demographic financially where they can support themselves when they come to the US. So when you're looking at the undergraduate level, our tuition fees would be 26,900 per year. So for some students, that is 
unattainable, but that's why we have all of the international campuses that provide the exact same education. If they don't come to the U.S. right away, they can start in an international campus. Yeah, and Yeah, and they just gateway right, right to the U.S., whether it be a study abroad or a full transfer. So the U.S. is not out of reach for any student. Maybe they don't start right away in the U.S., but they can come, absolutely. You just came here in Nepal, you know, for the first time. Have you got time to interact with uh, a few students, our parents, and uh, and did you get time to read the mentality of oh, U.S.? This is good time to go to U.S. or not? Maybe they are thinking in that way. So I did. I haven't actually spoken to any parents yet, but I have had a lot of interaction with students, and the general excitement about the U.S. is high. I think that students are very excited about the prospect of coming to America getting an American education and they all they want to know is how to achieve it you know how to make it within their reach and that's where we come in with various scholarship structures with various pathways to the US so we try to make it as accessible as possible for them so at the end of the day regardless of your profile we will we will find a way for you okay finally any any messages that you have uh, you want to share to Nepali viewers who are watching you on Nepali television what I would have to say to those students, absolutely, is do not discount the U.S. because of what you've heard in the media, what you've heard as visa regulations and restrictions, because there are so many misconceptions about the U.S. right now and the things that are going on in the U.S. On a day-to-day -day basis, nothing has changed in the U.S. We still we still celebrate international students, and especially on the Webster University campus, we make it a point and a goal to welcome people from all walks of life. So that's what we look forward to the most. Okay, thank you so much for your time and have a good stay here in Nepal. Thank you so much. Info Plus for genuine information.